Hey everybody, welcome to worshiptutorials.com. My name is Bradford. Today we have a, a lesson that I think everybody will find very useful, breaking down some lead parts and some songs I'm sure you've heard before and how they are a lot easier than you may think using chord shapes. Uh, and they're, yes, they're bar chords. Uh, not everybody directly loves bar chords, but when you break them down like this, it makes everything playing wise a lot easier. Uh, so I got uh, MJT Custom thin line T-style guitar with some Porter pickups. And we got our Agape 18 watt tribute head, a Mesa cab clone, we're going right in through Logic. Uh, great sounding device, especially if you don't have the ability to run your amp loud, or if you just can't run an amp on stage, period. This'll make it so you can. And then we have a plethora of wonderful effects, some Eventide. Um, right now I'm really using the time factor just for a nice dotted eighth. Uh, we'll be using the space for a nice plate setting. Um, we got a little bit of compression on, um, and I got these Will Sledge FX pedals. This is a, what is called Slim Drive, and this is what is known as his Veil. It's a 919 and an up boost. And of course, uh, I'm using this awesome, this one's mine, Dan Burgess uh, controller for aux switch for the time factor. It makes it a lot easier to tap and to cycle through presets. Uh, so we're gonna get into it. I'm using, uh, right now I just have a little bit of delay and this is just like a clean boost, pushing the amp a little harder. Um, but what I wanna break down is the fact that simple chord shapes that you already know, I mean, we've actually talked about this before, using an F shape, using a D shape, uh, you know, it's an F shape, here's your D shape, and how you can use those shapes to create lead parts and play different chords and all that. So one of my favorite lead parts to play, uh, and it really kind of shaped my thought on, on playing lead parts, is the pre-chorus part to the stand, Hillsong, the stand. Uh, what can I say, what can I do? And it's got this really tasteful lick underneath it. So I'm gonna kind of tap the tempo here to get it right. Um, and what we have here is your D shape, E shape, F sharp minor, back to the E, and then it starts again to the D. Okay, now that's great, that sounds awesome, um, but we don't need all that. You know, with, with pads covering underneath it, you know, we have our own pads, you guys should check those out, that'd be a great tool underneath this as well. So what I do is I make, to make it a little easier, uh, as great sounding as that chord progression is, we don't need all that, it's a little extra. So what I do is I take just the B string and the D string, and I use those two strings to create this lead part, and that's exactly what you're gonna hear in the recording. Um, and it's very easy kind of slide in from the fifth fret on um, both fifth frets for the B string and the D string and you slide into the seven. All right, we know that part. And then we're gonna slide up two frets, same thing. All right, so these are major chords. And then you're gonna slide up into this, uh, the minor chord. So it's like an A minor shape with the bar, right this. So that's our F sharp minor. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep just the, the B string in the D string, and that's gonna give us a minor chord, minor little, not even a triad, just a minor chord, because it's more than two notes. So, we'll go from the seventh fret, to the ninth fret, to the eleventh and the tenth fret, back down, like that. Now, uh, this, this video isn't just about playing the stand. The point is, is if you use shapes like that, that's good for little ambient licks in between transitions. Uh, it's good for, playing a quiet chorus, playing anything quiet really. And you can use that as long as you know what chord is. So right here, in the seventh fret, that's gonna be based off your D. And so that's really great and really simple and something you can add to your playing uh, to bring out some different lead parts and add just a nice little walk up maybe. To the A, to the A right there, B minor, A. You know, so you do stuff like that is really great. Um, adds a little something special. It's really easy, and you don't have to worry about uh, necessarily, you know, you know, it's that's great. A little blues lift riffs are awesome, but when you have a chance to kind of exactly like in the stand, it's great. So another song that uh, uses the same kind of idea is God's Great Dance Floor, Chris Tomlin's song, God's Great Dance Floor. And uh, what we see in that song is uh, a nice little riff that's played. It's very prominent. Very 
very prominent. Everybody knows that, you know, that riff if you know the song. And it's actually very simple. Same idea, but with a little, little different of a, of a twist. We'll cut it back a little bit on uh, dirt here. But what I do is I take, it goes from this, um, actually it's an A over C sharp to the D. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this C sharp minor shape. And we're gonna use the top part of it, or the top-ish part. The B string and the G string. So we'll be on the on the B string will be on the fifth fret, on the G string will be on the sixth fret. And that's the first part. And we're gonna slide up to the seventh fret for both strings. So keeping that same shape, the two uh, stacked on the B string and the G string, we're gonna slide all the way up to the 14th fret. And then down to the ninth fret. All right, so that's your, from the C sharp minor shape to the D, to the A, to the E. And now you could do octaves. It sounds cool. But when you do that, that's exactly it. Octaves to the same note. And so this gives it a little more color and kind of gives it, it sticks out in the mix a, little, mix a little more. I mean, your bass and your keys are gonna cover that low part anyways. So why don't you do something that sticks out a little bit, kind of, and it's fun. So using stuff like that is gonna give you between this shape for the stand and then using this shape for like God's great dance floor. You use those shapes like that and you'll be surprised how many songs you'll probably be able to pick out lead parts as you've heard before and you're curious as to what that voicing is or maybe it seems like an awkward shape to you the way you figured it out. Um, but in all reality, when you look at music, you have seven notes in a scale, and sometimes there's uh, borrowed chords and borrowed notes and accidentals and all that. But if you just look at it as the fact that you got seven notes in a scale, uh, you look at the fact that each song you do, there's seven possibilities. And then you can take that and break it down and realize it's not quite as complicated as it may seem. But when we look at the fact that we can use chord shapes, lead parts, look at the chord shape, uh, for the core that you're supposed to be on in that part of the song and figure out the fact that there's probably that lead part sitting in that chord somewhere which obviously would have to be in order to work so give that a shot mess around with some shapes like that maybe for new songs you're working on or maybe to add a new dynamic to a song a song that you've done thousands of times and you want to try something different or maybe this will help you figure out uh god's great dance floor or, or the stand or any other number of songs that may have something similar to this so thanks for checking us out today we'll see you guys next time